Oh, hi, I'm just, hi, I'm just standing here. <laughs> How are you guys thumbs upping when there's not even anything to even watch? See how long this takes. Hi! Welcome! I'm gonna get a beer. It's my wife Sharon that's you're staring at. Hi. We're gonna show you guys one uh, delicious beer. That's a, come on, focus. One of my favorite old school ales celebration. So we're gonna make some eggnog. We'll wait a minute until a few other people jump on. And the rest of you that are not watching this live, if you view this after the 29th of November, it will not have been live, but you'll be able to see a recipe, uh, which is not ours, but we've gotten a lot of use out of. And yeah, that's it. We'll show you. I'm not going to be able to... Uh, hi, hi and howdy. I'm not going to be able to read the comments because we're going to be using the front-facing camera here to get better resolution. And uh, maybe I'll pop over in a minute and take a peek, or Sharon will, and we'll see what you guys have questions on. But uh, we, prepped, we prepped most of the stuff, but we'll show you what we did. So before I get on the other side of the counter with Sharon, I just wanna make sure you guys can see this. So that's, oh God! <laughs> that is, uh, about four dozen egg yolks, which we're gonna, I'll, I'll break a couple more eggs down. I'm gonna clean that up first, so I'll just dump some egg yolks on the floor. For you salmonella freaks, I eat raw eggs all the time, all the time. So this recipe is made with, uh, why don't you read it, Cher, like the basis of the recipe. What do you got? You gotta talk loud too. Okay, 12 large eggs. 12 large eggs, just the yolks. One pound sugar, one pint half and half, one pint whole milk, one pint heavy milk cream, one cup rum, one cup cognac, one cup bourbon. A lot of booze. Mm. <laughs> one teaspoon freshly grated nutmeg and a quarter teaspoon kosher salt. So if you don't want a great nutmeg, there's something wrong with you. And we'll show you what that looks like too. I've got some. This is whole nutmeg. So nutmeg doesn't just come in a jar. That's what it looks like before it's put in that jar. I'm gonna put a little more light on us. There we go. And I, I like to grate this using, can you grab that grater? Just a super simple grater. And you might want to do it like over paper. I'll do it like into a container like that with paper underneath it. But that's more than enough. So we quadruple this recipe. So everything she read, um, we quadruple because we like it. We don't even, I don't even drink a lot of this, but we take it to like family parties and stuff and give it as gifts. Just drink one or two. And we'll talk a little bit more about like the history and content. So you got to start out with half the eggs with just the yolks, egg whites. Uh, we can't save all of them. I don't know what we would do with 48 egg whites, but she makes a banana pancake recipe, which is excellent, and it requires egg whites. So we break these down like so. Super simple, right? So I did that 47. <laughs> And now 48 times. I'm not gonna lie, I dropped two. I dropped one down the drain and then yeah, there's some whites and I dropped the whole freaking thing into the bowl. Like a jerk. So what's the first thing it says that white? Separate the eggs and store the egg whites. Duh. Duh. Next. <laughs> Beat the yolks with sugar and nutmeg in a large mixing bowl until the mixture lightens in color and falls off the whisk in a solid ribbing. So if you've never beat egg yolks, that solid ribbon, like if you're making um, custard or uh, various things where you are entraining air into the yolks, there's different stages. So if you don't have a device like this, you can definitely do it with a hand mixer like um, one of these. 
you know, a good old-fashioned hand mixer. And if you don't have that, you most certainly can do it with a whisk. It's just going to take time. So this will be noisy for a second. And I'm going to pull the camera off the tripod. And I will bring it so you can see what's happening. Well, not off the tripod. I'll just bring you over. How about them apples? So we want to entrain all that air into this. This is about one of the only things that we didn't, I didn't want to sit and make you watch us breaking down eggs for five or 10 minutes. Once this starts getting going, we'll weigh that out after this gets nutted up. So this recipe called, would, would call for four whole pounds of sugar. How's my audio with this running? Can you still hear the sound of my voice? So we're not going to put quite that much in. We're using a really good sugar as far as cane sugar is concerned. It's an organic granulated cane sugar. This is two pounds. So I'm going to start whacking in two pounds. Will you measure out another pound? So why pounds instead of volume? Anybody know why we're measuring with weight instead of volume like cup? Anybody? Bueller? Nobody? Nobody knows? Or you guys are just sick of this already? So why, why are we using weight? So Cher's got the kitchen scale over here. So kitchen scale, if you never used one. So we'll throw the bowl on and then we'll zero it, right? Just like a truck scale. It's more accurate. That's why it's more accurate because things, ooh, look at that sugar dust in the air. Another pound? One pound. And some change that'll be that'll be golden so we'll come back to that we're going to cut a whole pound out of this recipe just because we don't need things that sweet this is still going to be really sweet I think I'm even going to just use half of this. So we'll go two and a half, making a mess. We'll go two and a half. Here, I'll give you that back. You see how the color's starting to change there? You see that though? If I drop the bowl a little bit, we're adding that air in now. All right, so now I want to I show you this ribbon that we're getting. So you're looking for a ribbon consistency, and we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Eh, actually, we might be there. Let me grab a spoon, and I'll show you. I'm going to give it another 30 seconds. This is part of what makes the eggnog so rich and creamy is that we're entraining all this air. All right, I'm digging on that. So I, I ground the nutmeg. I want you to see what that looks like. I'm just gonna grind a little bit here so you can see regular easy grinder. Super easy, the inside of that. 
and it smells so good. Check this out. So this would be four teaspoons. And once we, I'll save a little bit of this, once we uh, get this stuff jarred up in a little bit, we'll add a little bit of this to the top of each of the jars. For one, it looks pretty. I just wanna see, I guessed, I guess. So there's one, two, three, four. And that'll be enough that we can put some on top. So we'll add that in. I also like to put a touch of cinnamon in. Could you give me the cinnamon wipe? Thanks. Good cinnamon. There's a place on Amazon you can buy this. It's a great grade of cinnamon that you can buy like in a one pound bag. Good cinnamon's expensive. So if you go to the store and you buy nutmeg in a jar, it does not have nearly the flavor or aroma of this stuff. What do you think? Let's check this out. I'll bring you back over here now. was too loud. So look at this. This is what we're talking about with that ribbon. We'll get rid of these wipes too. Look at that lid there, wipe. Oh, oh there it is. You got it? Cool. Uh-oh. Drop this. Look at that. That's what we're talking about. That's the goods right there. So you and you like I said can totally do this without a fancy stand mixer. You do this with a hand mixer or a whisk. It's just going to take time. So pretty cool. I like to read about the history of stuff. And I just pulled some excerpts from the interweb from different things that I've read in the past. Culinary historians debate its exact lineage. Most agree eggnog originated from the early medieval Britain posset, which is a hot, milky, <laughs> ale-like drink. So by the 13th century, monks were known to drink a posset with eggs and fig. That would actually be nice. Fig? Yeah. Fig's a nice flavor. So the word nag, uh, old English term for ale, in noggin was the wood cup it was drank out of. And that's kind of interesting. Uh, like you go to like an ale house and you you order a nag, which again, old word for ale, and you drink it in a nag. Remember the old song, the egg is in the nog? Well, that's what they're freaking talking about. The, uh, the stuff that you get at the grocery store, that garbage that comes in a bottle like this, not eggnog, not at all. It's like, that's like a weird dairy creation. So most Americans think eggnog is something that they get out of the milk carton during the two week period leading up to Christmas. Eggnog descends from sac posset. I want to pronounce that like in French, like posse, I don't know because it's an English word, if that's how it would be pronounced, which was a strong, thick English beverage. Check this out. Built upon eggs. Like, they didn't mix it. They fucking built this beverage. Milk, eggs, and either a fortified wine or ale. Highly alcoholic, like that. Hold on a second. Let's drink to that. <laughs> to eggnog. And it was also very much an upper class tipple. Ooh. As rich folks usually were the only ones who could procure the proper ingredients. Well, God bless America. We all have access to heavy whipping cream, half and half, whole milk, booze, eggs, and some spices. I should start singing my country tis of thee right now. So uh, now we're gonna mix the liquids together and then to do this right, you fold the two together. I can't remember if that bowl, I might have to run downstairs and grab something. I can't even remember if that one was not big enough when we quadruple this bad boy. So, um, I don't know, it looks like it might work. I don't think so. All right. It's 7.5 quarts. You know what we need? Here, you talk to them and I'll go get it. <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't, you guys, you guys tell Sharon to come back so I can go get this. Come here, Cher. Come here.
talk about planning error. So Sharon's like, I don't want to just talk to those people. They're weirdos. They're watching us make eggnog. I didn't she didn't say, say that. I did not say she that. She didn't say that. But I did. This is a proper noggin vessel right here. That's a proper noggin vessel. So, something else cool about eggnog, and a lot of people see a recipe like this and they're like, oh, it's too much alcohol. I'm going to cut the alcohol down. That's a good way to die. Okay? So, blah, 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 blah. blah. Yep. So, we start dumping the dairy and cream fest in here. Party in there. Yep, all of it goes in, wife. She's just dumping that milk everywhere. So again, we quadrupled this. We got heavy cream, half and half. Yep. So it's basically, if you quadruple this recipe, you got a half a gallon of each. So half gallon of half and half, half gallon of heavy cream, and a half gallon of, I'm having a hard time opening this son of a book. I'll do it. And a, a half gallon of whole milk. Um, food for thought. If you're going to go through the process of making this stuff, I had to squeeze it. You got an issue here. No, I just squeeze it and then I'll oh. sit in it. Here, it's like a, like a rat or something. Uh oh. She's spraying milk everywhere, you guys. It's a freaking spray fest. How much of the whole milk? I'm gonna shake this heavy cream. I'm gonna shake it all the whole thing. Alright. Yeah. Oh god, let me take it. Literally, this, okay. this is like just a cream fest right here. It's just squirting, hurting and squirting while we're making nog. So something else cool. So like the recipe that we're using is a modified, semi-modified version of Alton Brown's recipe. And I love Alton. If you don't love Alton, then there's something wrong with you. Um, this recipe, I do believe he took from... So we need to measure four cups of each. So we've got four kinds of booze. Bourbon, cognac, and... Uh, 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 rum. So that's a good rum. We're gonna nail four cups. four cups all the way up to the top red line. So that's all the dairy. All the dairy. Sharon's nailing it with the the rum there. Damn, that might be that whole bottle, woman. I know. Just go for it. Yep. So we're Outside gonna need a little dairy. more rum. Dump it in. So I'll grab some more rum. Yep. We need uh, how many more ounces? Shit, we're only at three cups. We need a whole nother well, we're cup. We're a little over three cups. Here's a, a really good Havana. Now we're just like mixing it up. Okay, okay. all right. I Very thought you were low. Okay. Hmm, that's a good rum. All right, so that goes in. Now, why do we need all of this booze? We need all this booze because without all of this booze, these raw eggs, that raw milk and cream that sits, literally this stuff, you guys, I will age this for a year. Without that 20% uh, level of alcohol, it's not good. So if you're interested in doing a little research, Dr. Rebecca Lancefield, uh, she was a microbiologist at... I have the same situation. I got plenty of that. Microbiologist at Rockefeller University. A uh, hundred years ago ish. Uh, we need more cognac. Yeah. Hundred years ago ish, she was making an, an eggnog recipe, which I'll throw at you.
So she was making this eggnog recipe. You need it. Back in, she was born 1895, died in 81. So every year at the college, her and her students would make this nog and it would sit and they would drink it the next year. So the students from the following year were drinking the nog from a year before. So we quite literally will save some of this for next year. And this year we will drink what we made last year. So you don't want to play around with the ratios. I also ex assume no responsibility for you getting sick if you do not follow recipes. Yeah, so now we're going to do, we got some good Woodford Reserve bourbon. Are we doing half and half? Yeah, you could do half and half. We've got one that's a double oak. One that's a double oak and one that is, um, which one's that there? Uh, this is straight whiskey, it says. And then a double oak. I think this one is. It's this one. Yeah, this is the Woodford double oak double oak there there you go well I might I might as well just finish that there's nothing <laughs> I'm just kidding you guys I don't really I don't really drink hard liquor very often at all it's not my thing as my wife pours our 16th cup of alcohol for this recipe so this is cool so she'll add that nah, just, yeah go ahead bottoms up when in room so there's just like a pile of empty booze bottles here. Are you guys enjoying this at all? Or are you just like sitting here because you're hoping to what are we missing? hoping to see me slip on an egg eggshell or something? Uh, we need salt. We need a little bit of salt, right? Mm -hmm. How much? A quarter teaspoon. So one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of salt. Oh, this smells so freaking good. It literally smells like an alcoholic party in my kitchen. So a couple things, she's gonna mix that. A couple things that you gotta think about. How are you gonna get this into the bottles? And one thing um, I've screwed up in the past and not gotten the nutmeg into the yolk. And what's happened is um, it settles. So then when you're ladling this into bottles, it's, uh, it'll, it's all settled out. And then your last couple bottles are all noggin, we're gonna to to use this to cut it, uh, fold it rather, are all, are, are all um, nutmegged up. Noggin, I'm just coming up with my own words here. They're all nutmegged up because it's all in the bottom, so you gotta make sure that that doesn't happen. So now we can put it all together. We've got everything, I believe so. We've got the, all the dairy, we've got the eggs, we've got the, We've got the cinnamon. Oh, hell, I'll put a little more nutmeg in here. I'm gonna show you this as we just throw that anywhere. I'm gonna show you this as we mix it. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, that ain't too shabby. How do you like that view? Is that view all right for you, kids? Bring the bring the house lights up a little. <clears throat> How was your guys Thanksgiving? Was it good? Was it not good? All right, so now we fold these. And part of that I'm gonna need share for. So I'll give you that. Got it. So we're just gonna scoop some off and we're gonna start cutting it in. Look at that. That's that ribbon that we're talking about. Are you freaking kidding me right now, you guys? 
Are you freaking kidding me? I'll cut that off of there, will you? All right, we'll start folding that in. Creeps looking down my wife's shirt. Sharon's, Sharon's like, it's okay. It's, it's okay, it's Christmas. What else would we? That's a lot of eggnog. Yeah, it is. Yep, it's a lot of nog. So, as you're folding these together, the idea is that you don't knock, you know, you could whip all this up. You don't want to, let me take that from you and we'll knock this out of here. You don't want to start beating the air out of this stuff that we just so lovingly put together. We are gonna mix this up a little bit because I think we have some sugar that is not. You guys wanna lick the bowl? Hmm? Okay, you want to take that from me and you mix while I adjust the angles. Did I like shut? Oh no! Oh no! You're going in to find out. I'm not going in. <laughs> Still full, huh? Yeah, we're still full too. So what you guys just saw the uh, one end of the spatula fall off, which is super cool. Super cool. Whatever, shit happens. Okay. That's like this. That's like the Christmas gift when you're drinking yeah. drinking Aunt Sharon's eggnog and you start choking on the end of a spatula. So that other recipe I told you about, Dr. Lance Fields, dozen eggs, which is the just the yolks, of course. Quart heavy cream, quart light cream, pint of bourbon, quart of rum, nutmeg and sugar to taste. Her recommendation was anywhere between a half and a three quarter pound. Uh, look that up if you're interested. But this is the one that I borrowed from Mr. Alton Brown, one of my favorite TV chefs. And again, I'm gonna read it to you. 12 large egg yolk only, one pound sugar, one pint half and half, one pint whole milk, one pint heavy cream, one cup Jamaican rum, one cup cognac, one cup bourbon, quarter teaspoon fresh grated nutmeg, plus more for serving, and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Um, you watch the process. You don't just add it all together at once. So we'll finish mixing this up. This is not cooked in any way, shape, or form. So you are dealing with raw products. If that's weird to you, you're weird to me, okay? Uh, most important is that you don't try to cut that ratio of liquor, uh, thinking that you're doing yourself a favor. The only favor that you would be doing yourself would probably be making you and your family really sick. So the, the level of alcohol is there for safety uh, and because it's delicious. And everything in the house is sticky right now. <laughs> so, as we start bottling this in just a second, you'll notice it's not super thick anymore. This needs to age. So, we'll drink some of this. We're going to take some of this to S12, you guys, in a few weeks. But this stuff needs to age. It needs to sit and mellow. Uh, good things happen when that happens. It's not, it's not that you couldn't drink it right now, but it needs to, it needs to age. So we'll, we, over the years of doing this, we've got like cool bottles like this. Go to like a craft store, Hobby Lobby, whatever. And they've got these kind of cool bottles. They're a couple bucks. Then actually one of our favorites, because we give this to people, you get like good old fashioned mason jar, ball jars with plastic lids, and that way your fancy jar, when they don't give it back to you, um, you don't feel bad, because these are like a dollar or two a piece. Mm -hmm. And it's actually really easy to fill these versus the other one. One thing I will also tell you, we'll show you. You want me to do it or you, you don't have an apron on? Yeah. So watch as we ladle this. One thing 
I give a little stir, make sure that all the nutmeg and stuff's coming up. But what you want to do is you're ladling this up, is you fill them and then you come back and top them off because of all the foam and air. Uh, if you just put the tops on, what you'll see if you come back to them later is everything settled and you've got like a huge void. And then when you show up at Christmas or give it as a gift, your friends are like, hey, Scrooge, you gave me a half full nag, you know, the old Scrooge nag. Nobody likes a Scrooge nag. I think I'm getting buzzed just breathing mm -hmm. this. I felt the same way. She felt the same way, she said. I wonder if that's possible. Like if you worked in like a liquor like factory. Okay, so this one's creaming out the top. So we'll come back to him in a minute. Oh, cool. So we'll take a, I'll show you that guy in a minute after we, we keep going. But like I said, this is basically it. That wasn't hard. If I wasn't um, talking to you guys and we just rocked this out, we'd have been done a long time ago, right? And that's okay, we wanted to share it with you. The reason I'm saying that is it's not a hard process. The most labor intensive part is the eggs and that literally took me, if it took me longer than 10 minutes to break those eggs down, there'd be a problem. It probably took closer to like five. I'm pretty good at it. I'm actually really good at it. I'm not gonna lie. Sharon's like, he's such an idiot. Will you stop talking? Any of you guys have like cool Christmas traditions? Like when we were kids, Santa Claus actually came and visited us. That was a cool tradition. Ooh, we usually have second Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, that's well, that's one of we ours. Yeah, that. tell them about it. Well, we usually make another whole turkey and all the fixings the next day, today, but we didn't do it this year. No, as the kids have gotten older and so we'll let that sit for a minute. We'll show them what it looks like. Well, so this is <laughs> okay, gone. Well, oh. All on oh, Sharon's asking, like, am I going to sit here and literally make you watch us fill every bottle? The answer is not if you don't want to, but more important, I want to, I want to let those settle so you see how that works. And I'm still making sure as I ladle, I'm pulling across the bottom of the vessel here to keep making sure the sugar that maybe didn't get incorporated completely and the nutmeg keeps getting mixed through the... God, my freaking shoulder's getting worn out from all this ladling, gosh. Oh man, I'm just creaming everywhere. <clears throat> Yeah, and this stuff is like, you got to be careful. You get like your uh, your aunt that just likes eggnog and she doesn't realize what she's drinking. Once it mellows out, you, you drink it and it just tastes, you don't taste all this alcohol. Once it mellows, you, you start drinking it and all of a sudden you're like, good God, I am at Christmas with no pants on. How did I get here? You know what I mean? So you got to be careful because... This is this. Oh, there, oh, there we go. Look, I won the prize, you guys. Yay. <laughs> Here. You got it? Yeah. Thanks. So, no. Maybe Sharon will walk around and we can read if any of you guys have any of your own special holiday traditions. Who gets a live tree? Who gets a fake tree? You see? Nobody bought a tree. Nobody wrote a tree? No, nothing about a tree. Oh. Trying to afford, just, usually. So you can scroll. Oh, I see. Okay. What about ferment? What did I just see ferment? What Where did you see that? I just dropped this in there as I walked away. I just saw the word ferment as I was walking away. From that what did you say? Hmm? What's it say? He just said ferment, would that be right? But what was he saying? For I don't you, know. What are you saying about fermenting? 
We're not fermenting anything here. The booze is already done. We're using the booze as a preservative because it kills microorganisms, the alcohol level. It's literally, I am just spraying everywhere, you guys. Just cream fest 2019. This is this is uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. trying to talk and do all this. What else you got there? Always have a live tree. Must be. Got to do a live from, tree. Fake like trees are for savages. Winston Salem have a real tree. Carolinas, huh? Yep. So the town. Brian's that, drinking. Huh? Homemade Kahlua with brandy and eggnog. What is it? Homemade Kahlua with brandy and eggnog. How do you make the Kahlua? What's the what is the base that you're starting with? I mean, would you guys be excited if I gave you some of my cream? Hmm? Would you? Is my wife is, is my wife asked if that's appropriate. Well, yeah, I'm overflowing with it. Can't even keep it all together. I gotta rinse this off. Appropriate is my not middle name. That's good. That's for damn sure. So, I'm a big fan of cleanliness as you're doing this stuff. Um, you gotta keep, keep things clean and sterile. All these bottles I gave a really good washing to beforehand. But even then, that booze content is really our Savior. I'm not joking. I've only gone through half of this. What do we got for bottles? I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, I know, I know we still have a few and we got more jars. Hey, would it be wrong if we took those those alcohol bottles and filled them with this? Yeah. Give me one of those. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes good sense. That's actually a good idea. That's a fucking dynamite idea, guys. I've never done that. Probably like some federal crime to refill alcohol bottles. Some stupidity. This one still has not really gone down. No, they will. No. It might take a minute. Come back and hit them. One time I did this, I filled them all, and I ended up having to take one bottle and dump its contents back into the... Uh, lids for those over there. Got to take the uh, contents and dump it into the remaining eight or ten bottles to top them all. So we're really excited about S12. I don't know if you guys care about that event. I do. It's coming up in just a few weeks. Not even. When is it? A week? Uh, eight days? Next week. Next week. A week from today. Yeah, we're going to be rocking out with Instructor Z. Don Dale of D-Day Response Group, Joel Gupton of D-Day Response Group, my great friend Paul Sharp of SPG Gym, Andy Hughes, former elected sheriff. We've got Scott Mo Puckett coming down. We've got uh, our good friend Shane and Carly of Impact Shooting Center, again, helping uh, helping us run the event, which is gonna be dynamite. I kinda wanna use this Hennessy bottle. Our, our great friend Chef and Emmy, the chefs, are coming back out. Chef, Chef Kent and I were talking this morning about some of the foods that he's doing. It's going to be, it's, it's quite literally four days of eating uh, the best food that you're ever going to eat. And I'm not just saying it, but like everybody that's gone, some of them are snobbish like me, agree. Why have I not been using these booze bottles all along? 
Oh my gosh. Oh! <laughs> I need this. Okay. Do you have the uh, the uh, cork for that one? For which one? That one that you're working on. Man, I'm just making this is just turned into like a mess now. Everything's sticky. My boots are squeaking. Yeah, so that S12 event, I keep talking about it because it's just it's just such a great time. There's so much work that goes into it, but at the end of the day, it's so worth every bit of it. People just like... It's the same thing. Like, over. <laughs> like this? Just ladling. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, golly. Believe it or not, I've had a half a beer. This is just, I'm trying to hurry because I know it's boring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you guys aren't bored. I would be. Well, that's not a very good thing to say. Why would I be wanting you to I'm watch it if I wouldn't sure. watch it? I'll show you. Okay. Oh, there they are. I'm going to take a look at the comments. We got to keep going. I'll let you do that. Switch hands, it'll go faster. Everclear brown sugar instant coffee. Yeah, that's not Kahlua. It might taste like Kahlua, but that's not Kahlua. Everclear? This actually looks pro. In the in the Woodford Reserve bottle, check that out. That's tight and right, you guys. And now, this stuff all gets refrigerated, okay? Just so you know, this is not... It's not like we're just tossing this in the cupboard. It's definitely getting refrigerated. You creeps are watching my wife do that. Planned. I was like, hey, yeah. help me. Help it was me. Help me. Bank a 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 Got it. Just a cream fest. Jeez. How many of you guys are gonna finish this video and go, what the hell did I just watch? What the hell did I just get myself into? And I'll be like, you know what you got yourself into. This was not what this was intended for. I really like this novel idea of just simply reusing the bottle. I mean, how stupid that we haven't been doing that forever. How stupid. Okay. The last one. I wonder if, uh, like, no, that's a bad idea. That's a very oh. bad idea. I'll make that go everywhere. Actually, it might be more. Can you hold that up? Mm -hmm. It might be more than even this bottle. Might, might be taking the rest of this to the lighting guy. So our local town does a annual lighting of the holiday lights, which is cool. Carolers, kids running around, you know, all merry and bright. People drinking hot toddies and nogs and things of that nature. So maybe we'll maybe we'll pocket a little bit of this and have some fresh nog. 
have some fresh nog. Man, this, there's more. This is like the never ending nog bucket. May your days, may your days. I got another mason right here. Oh, perfect. We keep a pretty well stocked kitchen. This one, I think, uh, now you're starting to be able to see as this starts to settle down. You see that? Oh, I see that. So, line. like right there is where the actual liquid is. So, I can hit this with a little bit more here. Everything needs to be mopped. Quite legitimately stuck to the floor. Charlie, don't lick anything, you'll be intoxicated. Whoa. Oh my god, you guys. I'm trying not to. <sighs> that worked well. All right, so probably what will happen is, as these guys, um, as they relax and settle in, we may very well need to open the tops off of one of these mason jars and um, use it to top off the other ones so that they're not empty. But that's easy. That's not hard to do. So... That's basically it, you guys. We, uh, we're happy that you joined us for this little fun holiday time. Um, more importantly, more importantly, how does this thing go? There we go. More importantly, means a lot that you share, that you share your free time with us and, and spend your energy kind of watching some of the content that we put out. The general idea is being real people, man. Tired of fake people. Tired of people that just want to tell you tell you bullshit and not, not be real. Just trying to sell you stuff, trying to sell you product all the time. Yes, we have uh, classes. Yes, we need to make a living. Yes, we sell things like t-shirts and oil. Buy it, don't buy it. I don't give a shit. Uh, because we stay busy and we keep working. More important though, we just want to pass on what we feel is like uh, living, living a good life. Who doesn't want to make gallons of eggnog and drink beer while filming themselves live on YouTube? Parting words. Thank you. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. That's all you got? Yeah. May your days, may your days, may your days be merry and bright. Not you. No. And may all, may all your Christmases. Now you. <laughs> Be light. Not you? Stop it. All right, fine. Peace out, guys. <laughs>